What was your father's full name? He was Roy Oliver Disney. A big mystery where the Oliver came from. And what was his history at the Disney Company? Well, he um, was older than Walt by eight and a half years, more or less. So when World War I came along, my dad was old enough to go into the Navy and uh, be part of the war. Walt was not, but um, although Walt did make his way across and, and uh, as part of the Red Cross and got into France as an ambulance driver at age 16 or something. Uh, everybody wanted to be in the war in those days, you know, there's a different war. Uh, but at any rate, uh, Dad was in the Navy and came back out of it at the end of the war with tuberculosis, was sent uh, by the Veterans Administration to recuperate down in Arizona for several years. This, apparently this was a pretty common situation in, in those days. And Walt, in the meantime, had grown up and come back from his stint in the war and, and tried to become a cartoonist in Kansas City with some degree of success. This has all been written, 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 of course. And um, eventually decided the only way to make his fortune was to come to Hollywood. By that time, my dad had been transferred to Sawtell Hospital, Veterans Hospital here in Los Angeles. And Walt wired Dad and said, I'm coming out, uh, come and join me. And Dad uh, checked himself out of the hospital that day, apparently, with a, well, he didn't check himself out, he just left. And uh, joined up with Walt, and, and that's the, that was the beginning of the whole enterprise. Now, what was Walt's role in the company? Walt was the company. Walt was the creative force and the driving force uh, for everything that uh, ever happened there the whole time. My dad was, uh, well, here's the story my dad always told about their relationship. He was the older brother, as I said, by eight years. And, and there were two brothers older yet than them. And so my dad would became the de facto babysitter for Walt when he was little. Well, they lived in a house with an attic bedroom uh, that the two of them occupied for quite some time, and they slept together in a double bed. And my dad's version of the story was that he'd say, uh, Walt uh, had a little problem with wetting the bed, and he used to, quite often, he'd pee all over me. And he'd kind of smile and he'd say, and he's still doing it. <laughs> and uh, it was a very affectionate, but a slightly irritated uh, version of their relationship. I, but I always thought it described it quite well. Uh, now, what was of Iwerks' role in the company in those early years? Uh, one of Walt's jobs early days in Kansas City was at a little studio where they were making cartoons for theatrical showing. A lot of them were just still drawings that became slides, advertising slides. It was really an ad, ad agency. And Ub was another of the artists working there, and in fact an artist that Walt admired very much. Uh, and so they got to know each other. They were about the same age and, and got to know each other um, you know, with a, with a um, working together kind of a relationship. And when Walt did come out here to Hollywood, uh, Ub was the first guy he wanted to come with him. Because Ub could really draw an enemy a lot better than Walt, in fact. But he left the company fairly early on? He was, uh, he, he drew probably the first two or three Mickey Mouse cartoons in a lot of work that preceded Mickey Mouse, uh, almost single-handedly. I mean, the, the, he was really fast and, and it, was a, it was a different world in those days. And of course, uh, there was no sound, so there were a lot of, a lot of things different. Um, but they finally had their creative differences as, Hollywood is famous for, and Ub decided uh, he would, could do better by going his own way. He had ideas for other characters, and he went off for quite some time, started his own studio, made a bunch of films. This was in the 30s, 
um, eventually couldn't make a go of it, and he actually came back to Disney as a uh, as more or less the head of the machine shop and, and all the technological advances that were going on. And he was an, absolutely a genius in that field. I think Ub invented about two thirds of the, of the technological steps forward that were made between oh, the mid late 30s and, and into the 50s and 60s. So there was no grudge then because he had left the first time? Well, the relationship was clearly different after you know, he'd gone off on his own and come back, but, but uh, there was a great deal of admiration back and forth between the two. When did the company move into features, to feature animation? Well, that was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which opened in 1937. Uh, just historically, Mickey Mouse was born and uh, became a, a big hit in 1928. And that was the first sound cartoon, as well as the first Mickey Mouse that came out. So that all happened at once. And Walt right away wanted to experiment and push the medium. Uh, and there was sound, and then there was color, and then there was a series of shorts that they began to make called the Silly Symphonies that were not Mickey Mouse, not Donald Duck, they were abstract uh, ideas, skeleton dance was one, the old mill, uh, a bunch of, of really interesting, truly kind of experimental pieces. Most of them won Academy Awards too. Uh, all really kind of practicing to see what you needed to do to make a feature length film in this medium. And they were all, uh, you know, rehearsals for, to make Snow White, I think, you know, although I don't think even Walt knew it was going to be Snow White at the time. Once they moved into features, did it change the fortunes of the company? Uh, Snow White was uh, as big a hit in its day as Indiana Jones was in its day. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine now what an enormous success that thing was. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is what built the whole Burbank studio. Uh, which Walt explained to his father by saying, don't worry, we can always convert it into a hospital. Um, it, it pushed the company down the road to really an awful lot of, of successes. There followed in the next three years, uh, Pinocchio, Bambi, Dumbo, Fantasia. I mean, it's an astonishing output, not to mention a lot of shorts that were being made at the same time. Now, why was the company named after Walt? I know originally it wasn't, wasn't it the Disney it was, Brothers? It was the Disney Brothers it did for several years at the beginning. Um, but the movies, the shorts themselves, always had it was a Walt Disney cartoon, a Walt Disney production. And Walt was the artist, and I think he felt that, that it was better that it be a person rather than a, a group of persons. Mm -hmm that were responsible for it. And in, in any way, case, it kind of followed the nature of the two. Uh, Walt was the outgoing showman, and my dad was back in the back office uh, wearing a suit and tie and doing business with the bankers, you know? And it, so their personalities really pretty much followed that line. So there was no ego for him about the lower profile role with the company? Oh, I think, yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, of course it hurt him. You know, but Were they but close? he saw it as as the right way to do things because clearly, a Walt Disney production would be, you know, better sale than Roy and Walt Disney present or the Disney Brothers present or whatever the you know, uh, and he could see that that was the right way to go. And anyway, that's what Walt wanted, and, and that was my dad wanted to do what Walt wanted. So they did they have a close relationship? They were very, very close, they, as only brothers can be. But they could also argue like brothers. So. <laughs> That's a two-edged sword.